about your image. Yes, of course it is important, but this is where, unfortunately, most people start. You go to a normal business consultant, and one of the first things they'll talk to you about is, you know, you need to have the right uniform, you need to have the right van signage, uh, all of that kind of stuff. And that, that's typically what they will talk about when they talk about positioning yourself. Me, it's about positioning yourself as an expert in your local community. Me, it's about getting inside your customer's head and understand, getting your customer to understand that you are the go-to guy. Yeah, many other consultants, coaches, they're more interested in is the you know has he got a press shirt, has he got a van, a signage, all that kind of stuff. Is the paperwork? Has he got a letterhead? Has he got a graphic? Has he got uh, a logo? All of this kind of thing. And that's important, but because they bring that up and, and use that first, they make that the definitive. And that's where it stops as far as positioning is concerned, as far as image is concerned. That's where it stops. And that's not what should happen because you've got to look at the whole process of how you appear inside the head of your customer apart from just how you look. So, yeah, image is important, but not as important as, as far as I'm concerned as the type of uh, platforms that you're using, where you are, and what the message is that you're actually getting at, how you're educating your your customers. So, of course, it's obvious you should have a uniform of some description. Many people will go with polo shirts or sweatshirts with the branding on them uh, and the branding perhaps on the back of them. It's good to be nice and clean and presentable. My advice has always been something I always did, always keep a clean shirt in the back of the van with you because when you move to a new customer to do a quote uh, and you turn up, the last thing you want to do is turn up looking all uh, mucky and, um, and messed up. So always try and keep something uh, clean, either a fleece that goes over your shirt or a clean shirt, but something that makes it, it gives it a cleaner appearance. You go into somebody's house and you, even though they realize you're working, even though they know that you've been out working for the day, it just sends a wrong message. When you walk into somebody's home and you've got cobwebs all over your back or you've got brick dust uh, all down your front or whatever it might be. So try and have some form of uh, either a, a spare shirt or a fleece that goes over or a jacket that goes over so that you have a clean appearance when you turn up on somebody's doorstep. Uh, the vehicle, yes, you should have a vehicle that is branded, that is marked up. I have heard all of the arguments about, oh, if it's branded, it'll attract thieves, this, that, and the other. The, the research proves, believe it or not, research, I can't remember who the insurance company was, carried out by an insurance company. Uh, there was research carried out that it makes bugger all difference whether the van is sign written or whether it's a bloody plain white van. It's all in your head. The research has proven that there is no difference as far as what gets broken into. These guys will chance their luck. If they feel like they, 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 they want to uh, get in, then they're going to get in. If there's no marking on the van and they think that it's worth a punt, they will give it a shot. The, the the opportunity for them is more about the location that the vehicle is parked in and so on and so forth rather than the actual signage on the van itself. So, you know, for me, that argument is out, is out the window. However, with a sign written van, it communicates to a customer a number of things. Number one, it communicates that you are a proper established business. Number two, it communicates that you are proud to be the owner of that business and proud to shout your name out and say who you are. Uh, and number three, it's, you're not running away. You're not hiding from anything. And unfortunately, these are the kind of associations that a customer makes in their mind. You pull up on the doorstep, white van man, and then the, the next guy who pulls up to quote, pulls up in a, uh, a marked up van. I can guarantee you that there are certain scenarios running in your customer's head. Uh, like I say, a lot of this is, is deep psychology in the sense that they're not voicing it. They probably don't even voice it to themselves, but there's that little niggle. There's that little thing. But you 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 pull up in a white van or an unmarked vehicle uh, and somebody else pulls up behind you and they've got a nice clean marked up vehicle. They're winning hands down because in the customer's mind, they are proud of what they've got in terms of their business. Their business is there, it's out, it's open, it's they it can be seen. You, on the other hand, in your unmarked vehicle, 
what is it you've got to hide? What are you afraid of? Why are you not proud to shout out who you are? All of these little things deposition you rather than position you. And if you want to position yourself uh, as the expert, then you need to consider making sure that your vehicle is done. Paperwork, uh, again, you know, when you're sending out your quotes, having proper laid out quotations, having proper um, forms that go out to your customers rather than scrappy bits of paper or something that's just been chucked together on an Excel spreadsheet. If you're going to do it on an Excel spreadsheet, at least spend the time putting together some templates so that you have a standardized template that goes out to your customers that looks more professional, that is branded. Now, you guys know my feeling about uh, logos and, and graphics and so on and so forth. I don't think that as far as advertising is concerned that they hold a lot of uh, sway. I, I'm not a great believer in them. However, I do believe that there is a place for them in your business. And this is one of those places. When you're sending out letters, when you're sending out invoices, when you're sending out quotations, when you're sending out certificates, you need to make sure that your branding is consistent, that you do have a company logo, that it is being used appropriately on all of the documents that you're actually sending out. Making sure as well that all of your contact details are available on all of the uh, paperwork that you send out. See, some silly things, uh, you know, for, for example, somebody sending out a quote and not having their business address on it. Ridiculous. You know, I, I've heard arguments from people who are advertising, say, in local community magazines, right? They're advertising in local community magazines. They're giving a mobile number or uh, a number. And they're not, you know, when, when they send out a quote, they come to do a quote for the job and they send out the quote. The quote goes out with like a logo on it and a phone number on it and no address on it. And when you ask them about it, it's like, oh, I don't want customers coming to me, knocking on my door. I don't want them complaining. I don't want this. I don't want that. I mean, that is ridiculous. If you are proud of your business and if you are um, good at what you do, number one, you won't have freaking customers banging on the door all the time. It just doesn't happen these days. Uh, unless, of course, you're a freaking idiot and you are um, – did I say that out loud? <laughs> and you are um, not doing the job properly or you're not go turning up when you say you're going to turn up or you are uh, charging people for work that you don't carry out. You know, if you're if you're a cowboy, a con man, uh, an idiot, like I said, then, yeah, you'll have people banging on your door. But if you're a bona fide, a proper business person, then you won't have people banging on your door. But by not putting your details on your uh, on your paperwork, leaving your office, what you're doing is you're signaling to people that there's something iffy, there's something not right. You, you're not happy with your business. You're not proud of what it is that you do. Um, they're also thinking, and, and they won't do it, but they're also thinking, but what if I have a problem? How do I get hold of this guy? I've got nothing. I've got a phone number and a magazine ad. I've got nothing. So in their head, they, you, again, you're losing because the next guy comes along. He sends out a quote, and on his quote, nice letterhead, his address, his phone number, all of the contact details, his email address, all of that is all there, and the customer's comparing that to the sheet of paper that they got from you with a logo and a price. And the, 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 the comparison is like, again, even if they don't voice it, the comparison's going on up here. This one looks more bona fide. It looks more professional. I'm going with this one. So, you know, make sure that your paperwork and, and do what you have to do. If you don't want people turning up at your home address, then rent a business address. You know, most local authorities will either rent you an office space quite reasonably cheap or they'll hot desk you quite cheap. So you'll you'll get a, a hot desk. Some of the members are doing that already. Uh, or you can get a virtual address from some of these places. Um, and you can there are businesses that do it. They'll be a little bit more expensive, but your local authority quite often run what they call incubator centers, and they will give you a business address to operate from. I won't give it to you. They'll charge you for it, but you can have a business address to operate from. It's not that expensive, but for the sake of making sure that you're winning more of your quotes, that you're getting more of your business, all of these things will affect your conversions. Guys, please don't forget, if you've got any questions, do jump in and ask your questions. We're going to wrap it up soon. I've run over on time again, but we're almost there. Um, the, the final thing is attitude. The final thing is your attitude. It's how you approach your business. You know, it, it's, it's, and this stems not just from when you're standing in front of the customer. 
you need to have the right attitude completely throughout your business uh, environment and throughout your life, really. Um, very simple examples that I use when we're running the training courses is if, if you're one of these grumpy freaking drivers who gets road rage and you're driving down the road uh, and you get leery with people, you drive up people's arse or you get upset when somebody cuts you up and you signal you know, out the window to them, uh, and that is evidently who you are, then don't expect people to warm to you just because you stand in front of them now smiling and being graceful um, because people will see through that. You need to have a, a more approachable attitude about who you are and what you do. You don't know who's going to see you acting the way you act. If you misbehave like that driving, if you misbehave like that in the pub, if you misbehave like that out at a football match, you don't know who's seeing that, who's judging that. And then you take that to work and you expect that because you're a nice guy at work, people are just going to uh, warm to you. But you need to be approachable. You know, when people ask you questions in uh, the work environment, when people, when customers approach you and they're querying something, don't try and be Billy Big Nuts, you know, Billy Big Nuts, whatever it's called, with all the technical answers and proving just how brilliant you are simplify things and explain things to the customer in a way that they will understand it be approachable in the sense that when somebody asks you something be willing to put the effort in to making sure they understand it rather than just dismissing it going, well i'm the electrician and i know better you don't know um be the kind of guy who is more approachable who's happy to answer questions be the kind of guy who's who's prepared to go an extra mile as well you know, when somebody wants something, instead of just being a grump about it, it's like, yeah, okay, we can do that. I'm not saying do stuff for free. I'm just saying be more amenable, be more helpful, be more approachable. Um, have that attitude of I want to help, not the attitude I want to just get the job done and get the frick out, yeah? So watching the attitude as well. Okay, guys, that is where I'm going to wrap it this morning again. Mm -hmm.